So in one of my previous top five Tuesday videos, Skylar Rose left the top comment and he wanted to see the top five shoes that have lost their hype and if it's a good or a bad thing. So I wanted to go ahead and do that video for him and for you guys that thumbs it up. What is going on guys, Hess Kicks here, collectivekicks.com and I wanted to bring you guys this video today on you guys' behalf. Thank you guys for leaving the comments in the last Top 5 Tuesday video. And today, if you guys want to leave suggestions for future Top 5 Tuesday videos, leave that comment. And then if you guys like that suggestion, thumbs that comment up. And then I will uh, be considering those in the future videos because I appreciate when you guys do that. So that being said, uh, this one was a kind of a fun one because it was Top 5 Sneakers That Have Lost Their Hype. And I thought about it, I was like, man, that's that's happened a lot. Like across the board, I've already mentioned this quite a bit that the sneaker market is kind of collapsed at this point. Obviously with stores like Finish Line and Foot Locker taking the 25% hit and then major corporations like Nike cutting back like 1400 jobs or 1500 jobs or whatever it is, obviously they need to make an adjustment as well. So the fact of the matter is the market is um, being hit pretty hard. So I wanted to go ahead and cover that for you guys in this video. There is a ton of suggestions from you guys out there that follow me on Twitter. I'm gonna be putting them on the screen right over here uh, because there's so many of them. I'm just gonna scroll through them so you guys can see all the different comments. And all of them are really, really relevant for this video. Most of the comments that you guys left me were solid and definitely my feelings as well for a lot of the sneakers that have lost their hype over uh, the years. So nice work on those people that left me comments on Twitter as well. If you don't follow me at Hess Kicks uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. But before we get started in the video, I just wanted to throw this out there as a little disclaimer. Like if all you care about are the shoes that are hyped up and you don't really care about them when they're not hyped up, then you're really into the sneaker market for the short term gains. Um, and you know, it is what it is. There's a lot of people that are in it for that because there's definitely a lot of monetary value to sneakers. Uh, anybody that pretends that there's not a dollar value associated to most of the sneakers that you see behind me uh, is crazy. I mean, the money goes a long ways. And if you have really nice sneakers or ones that are in high demand and hyped up, then those go a long way and more than just sneakers. So I totally get it if you're in it for the short game. But for people that are in it for the long term and people that just really like sneakers, the overall just everything about shoes that smell when you open the box, uh, even though it's probably bad for you, and like everything about getting like a fresh pair of sneakers. Like if you guys watched the other day, those brown Air Force Ones that I got from the Nike factory store for 43 bucks, I was super geeked up on that. The fact that I got them for so cheap was so rad and they're super high quality, super comfortable shoe. Probably the best pickup that I got steel wise this year. It was just an amazing pickup for me and I'm super excited about that and stuff like that is brings me back to square one lets me remember like this is why I got into sneakers. It's not because everybody has those shoes or nobody has those shoes. It's because I wanted to get those shoes and I like the color and everything else in, involved with that. But uh, that being said, I just wanted to throw it out there. Obviously hype is crazy um, and it's something that you can follow, but you can also start off with that and then develop your own sense of taste and what styles and what you like along the way. And just because some of these models that I'm gonna mention in this video might be kind of played out a little bit right now, that doesn't mean the hype is gonna ever come back. Uh, prime example, like the Prestos right now. The fact that you can get regular Prestos for 50 bucks at outlets, then you have the acronym Prestos that everybody's crazy about, and then the off-white Prestos that everybody's absolutely crazy about, but nobody cares about any of the other Prestos you can get at the outlets, or any of the OG colorways that ended up dropping this last two years or whatever it was. I mean, that's the hype game right there, the fact that that's selling it. But for those that appreciate and remember Prestos, then like myself, like I definitely love Prestos from back in the day and the sizing, how it was small, medium, and large. All the craziness about the Presto, the comfort and everything was, it was basically the Ultra Boost before the Ultra Boost. So to start us off with our top five, we have the Nike basketball line with the LeBrons, the KDs, and the Kobe's. I kind of have to include all of them in this, but really I'm gonna focus on the LeBrons. The Kobe's obviously kind of lost it a little bit with the Kobe ADs, the ADs that had that false zoom in it or whatever that was. It was just kind of a really bad marketing ploy that um, Nike ended up doing on those ones. and. They're just weird. They didn't sell very well. They're still overpriced um, and everything else in between. So that that's an unfortunate one. The KD is another one where um, I really like the line actually. I think it's done well. But um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things where they overproduce so many different colorways. You don't need 20 colorways of KDs. And, um, you know, Leo Chang's a great dude and he makes a lot of cool stuff. But it's just unfortunate. And part of it is probably constraints to the dollars, what they can actually produce. Um, based on the dollar amount that they need the shoe to be and trying to be innovative and everything else. Uh, but it looks like they ended up taking some of that KD technology 
and migrating it over to the LeBron line with the LeBron 15s. The LeBron 15 has actually got a lot of positive hype, but up until this point, uh, it's been kind of lackluster. Like the nines were, were pretty good. The tens were good. The 11s, which is actually my favorite, but the fit was terrible on them. LeBron didn't like him, didn't play in those. He went back to the tens and then he's playing in the soldiers. I already discussed this many times with the fact that LeBron wasn't even playing in his flagship model. He's playing in his knockdown models. Absolutely hurts the brand. It absolutely hurts everything. Jordan wasn't playing in any team Jordans, even though they didn't have them back in the day. He was playing in his flagship model. LeBron playing in the soldiers is a bad, bad move. But the fact that that was happening, then the LeBron 12s was just meh. It was okay. The little hex zoom air on the bottom of those just felt too gimmicky. I don't know what they're what direction they're really going in the 13s probably one of the worst lebrons to date i don't know you guys be the judge 14s looked like they were getting back on the right track uh, at the same time it was more like a hybrid version of the uh soldiers but then the 15s are going to bring back a little bit to the lebron line but one thing that i had kind of been fearful already before these are dropping the fact that we've already seen a dozen colorways of the lebron 15s we don't need that many colorways uh, back in the day, Jordan had four colorways of like Jordan 3s, 4s, and 5s and stuff like that. Four or five colorways, like OG colorways is it. Obviously, it's a new era. You can't have, it's like a digital era. You can't have bring tape cassettes to the MP3 world right now. In, in a sense, that's kind of what you'd be doing. You have to morph and ad adapt. And so you do need to bring more. But if you bring too much, then you oversaturate. And I think that's kind of what they've been doing. But um, the LeBron line in general, I think is a great line and it's the flagship pinnacle nike basketball line they just need to bring more i don't know how how they can um i think that this is uh, going to be a good year again depending on the price point and how they decide to expand it but the lebron line has definitely been the one that's been hurting quite a bit but excited to see where nike ends up taking it from here uh with the 15s number four spot goes to some more nikes and unfortunately we gotta say the Flyknit Racers, man. Remember the multicolor Flyknit Racers? Super mega crazy hype on those. And now you could seriously buy them for like 90 bucks for the Flyknit Racers multicolors. And then they dropped the, the different tongue versions of the multicolors. They just mass produced the heck out of it. They saw they, they were like, oh, these other colors aren't selling. They want this one. Let's bring back a bunch more and do a couple different ways. And now they're both sitting on Nike.com. And if you guys want to buy any of these shoes in this video, you guys can check the links in the description because ultimately the consumer wins and you can end up getting a lot of these sneakers for well under retail, which is a good thing. I mean, at the end of the day for people like us that want the shoes that, um, that don't really care about the hype, but just we like the model, uh, then you guys have the option to be able to get those for pretty cheap. In the same vein, we also have the Nike sock darts. And unfortunately, this is one of those shoes that a lot of people were geeked up and hyped up about. But as soon as they started mass producing them, and they weren't like Nike Lab exclusives where they would drop and then all of a sudden they would just sell out instantly. Um, then it just kind of lost it, man. They, they dropped too many colorways. Eventually, I think on Nike ID and even the, even the collab ones, man. The Even the crazy Stone Mountain collabs that I saw. Did I say Stone Mountain? <laughs> <laughs> even the the crazy stone island collabs basically were sitting like in outlets that i saw like even though those had an original resale value they just ended up dying off a bit so so definitely the sock darts felt that market shift as soon as they started mass producing them and making way more pairs than people really cared about then they just started sitting and then going to outlets and whatnot so it's definitely an easy outlet shoe to pick up i think another reason why the flyknit racers kind of lost a luster a little bit is because uh, they weren't that comfortable for people that had wider feet. So I have a handful of pairs of Flyknit racers, but they're really, really narrow and, and they don't really fit people with wide feet. And since there's better options out there, it just makes it go, nah, I don't really need that model anymore. I'd rather have a different one. Um, the Flyknit trainers might be one where you guys might might be excited about, but that one's, in my opinion, dead on arrival as well. The original colorways might have sold out, but they keep restocking and restocking, I've noticed. And so the resale seems to be dropping on quite a few of those. And in fact, some of those Flyknit trainers are still in stock uh, right now. So I think that that is kind of, again, DOA, dead on arrival. And uh, we'll see what ends up happening with the Flyknit races, if they'll ever have a comeback. But it was a staple for quite a while, and then now it's not. So moving on to the number three spot goes to the Nike Foam Posit. It hurts my heart to say it because I'm a huge foam fan from the beginning with these Royal Ones. Um, these ones were crazy and I'm not even the hugest fan of blue, but I loved these crazy metallic joints right here. And shout out to Sneakerhead in the Bay because he's the one that actually gifted me this pair right here. The thing about the phone posits is the price points have always been kind of crazy. 180 was the retail in 1997. 
they're $200 and, and then they're up to $250 and then $285 or $275. It's been crazy, especially for the All-Star releases. But I think the All-Star versions are like one of the only ones that are like super hyped up. The fact that copper foams are back at the outlets again, it just comes full circle again. Uh, back in the day, I mentioned this many times, I got the uh, original copper foam posits from the Nike factory store for 64 bucks on sale. And now they're back at outlets and I saw them for like 80, I saw them back at the outlets for like $120, I think, or something like that. Those, they'll probably still end up going down depending. But, but really, I think that Nike just ended up overdoing it again. The fact that they released too many, they released the eggplants again, they released all the OG ones that people were kind of thirsty for. Then they released a bunch of just weird colorways with no stories. At the point where I mentioned many, many times they're just feeding consumers crap because they think that consumers want stuff because they're consuming. But at the end of the day, like you keep feeding enough crap, they don't just, they get full, they don't want it anymore, right? And that's kind of where uh, the foams have gone. I still think they're staple among sneakerheads. Uh, personally, it's one of those shoes that I'm always gonna love. It's one of the main shoes that got me into sneakers and really got me to look and go, like these are absolutely insane. Like I love everything about what the shoe has to offer with the cutting edge technology, as well as the fact that it just looks super, super crazy. So um, it's definitely a shoe I'm always gonna love. And I'm sure there's a ton of you guys out there that feel the same way, but the hype is definitely dying. They're sitting in stores all over the place. So will it be resurrected again like the other sneakers in this countdown? Only time will tell. So moving on to the number two spot. This is a shoe that is not a Nike or a Jordan. And so those people that are thinking, this is just a Nike, top five Nike. This is an Adidas one and it is the Adidas NMDs. And I have to say that the, the NMDs definitely have lost the hype and the luster quite a bit. Doesn't mean it's a shoe that I don't like. I still really like the shoe. And I know if most people try on the NMDs and they already have an Ultra Boost, they're definitely not that interested in it because the Ultra Boost is so much more significantly comfortable than the NMDs. And then if you have those people that hear all about Boost and they're like, Boost is supposed to be amazing, and then I tried on these NMDs and they're not even that good. I actually have an NMD sitting on the ground over here, so I'm gonna pull it out. Back to what I was saying, if you're a new consumer of Adidas Boost and you're like, this isn't as comfortable as all these Boost fanatics are actually suggesting, it's because the NMD is not that boosty comparison to the Ultra Boost or the 9317s and so on and so on. One final plug, I'm gonna be giving this pair away uh, of the 9317s. If you go check out the other video, that I have uh, linked in the description, you can enter the giveaway to get these. They're $180 retail, and there'll be somebody's um, in that video, so peep that video. But the NMDs are not near as comfortable as those models, so the fact of the matter is, you don't get as boosty of a shoe with the NMDs. Aesthetics are kind of crazy on the shoe. The original OG colorway was super, super hyped up, and then Adidas restocked that colorway, which the white NMD one, they didn't restock yet, but I bet they will eventually. You just never know what Adidas is gonna do with these restocks. Basically, they overproduced so many different colorways, so, so many different colorways. They dropped an NMD R2, and then the CS2s, and the, I mean, there's so many different versions of the NMDs. It's just crazy, crazy how much um, they've released. And then they're still creating NMD R1s. So it's definitely getting them out there for the consumer. I will say though, even though the hype is dying on them and you can get some of them for under retail, you still can't get them for like 50% off, like the Air Max 1 or the Air Max 90 uh, or the Air Force 1 or the Air Nike Dunks, all complete like 100% staples for Nike and yet you can get those ones for 50% off. You can't get these for 50% off uh, for the most part. You can get them for like 30% off or something like that. So eventually they're gonna go down to where they are 50% off and then more people are gonna be consuming them, trying them, and then who knows if they'll be hooked or not. But um, I think it's it's a good move for Adidas to be 100% honest that they're mass producing quite a bit because it's still giving people a taste of what a lot of people have been talking about. And for us early adopters that are into the sneaker market and into the sneaker releases, we're on top of the releases. We know when things are dropping. Uh, those other people that are in your class room or whatever, you know, and your coworkers or whatever, they're probably not on top of all those things. So they don't know what's gonna drop and what's gonna sell out. And if they see a pair, they're like, oh, that's like what they were talking about. Then they might wanna buy them. It's really gonna have a wider audience in the end for Adidas. And then once they buy them, then they can see if they're comfortable or not. But that is the number two spot. So we made it to the number one spot on the countdown and that has to go to Air Jordans. Unfortunately, in general, Air Jordans, and I've mentioned this again many times for those that have watched my videos, Air Jordans have definitely lost their hype, especially in 2017. Does that mean Jordan brand is hurting and they're not gonna be able to recover from this? 
No, I still think that Jordan Brand will be able to recover down the line. And also one thing I wanted to mention with the whole Yeezy jumping over the Jumpman stories going on, the fourth quarter for Jordan Brand is super, super strong usually because they have the holiday releases and that generates ridiculous amounts of sales for Jordan Brand. So at the end of the year, I believe that Jordan Brand will be back in the number two spot behind Nike because of the fourth quarter earnings. So um, Adidas jumped over maybe right now, but I think Jordan Brand will be back. Also, the off-white Jordan 1s is the most talked about pair of sneakers like currently right now. So Jordan Brand definitely is not dead, but the, the bottom line is a lot of the general releases that end up releasing, this is a bad example because this is a great shoe, uh, but a lot of the general releases that are releasing in today's market are just ones where people are not buying them. They're just sitting in shelves all over the place. When these end up re-releasing, I definitely want to get a pair with a Nike Air. Also, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the midsole is cracking on my pair. So I definitely want to get another pair of these when they end up releasing. But again, I do think that they can make a comeback. It's just right now, Jordan Brand is definitely suffering because all these pairs are sitting all over the place. Eventually, they're just gonna have to slash the prices so low so they just end up selling out. Who knows if like some of the future releases that Jordan Brand is um, producing is gonna be cut or if they're going to end up um, only releasing part of the inventory and expecting a restock to happen later. But speaking of restocks, who remembers those Jordans that restocked back in the day via Twitter? Randomly, nobody knew about it, and all of a sudden it was crazy. They had the, the in, most insane releases from the last two years that ended up dropped, a lot of the limited ones. They ended up restocking and I remember I got my Fear 5s from that uh, once and I don't know, it was just cool when that happened and you could see stuff like that, but they can't really do that anymore. Um, most of this stuff is just sitting. Anyways, that's pretty much my thoughts on the top five pairs of sneakers that have lost their hype. But what do you guys think about my list? Thank you to the contributors on Twitter for tweeting me. If you guys have other suggestions of shoes and models and, uh, and whatnot that have been releasing that are no longer hyped up, leave a comment in the comment section as well. If you guys have, again, future suggestions for Top 5 Tuesdays, um, just go ahead and leave a comment, and then, again, thumbs up that comment if you guys like it. If you guys do want to hit the thumbs up on this video, please do. It's always cool if I can hit a 1,000 likes. It usually doesn't happen, but I challenge you to hit that thumbs up. Hopefully, I'll get a 1,000 likes on this one, maybe. Who knows? If you guys do want to be notified of when I post a video, subscribe, and then click the little bell next to the subscribe box. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see some of my other Top 5 Tuesday videos, just other videos on my channel, click the screen at this time. And we'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.